Welcome back to Principles of Electronics, lesson number seven. Today we're going to be talking about the capacitor, another important component that we use in electronic design. Uh, the pictures I have here show you they come in all different shapes and sizes, but let's talk about what it does for us first. Uh, capacitors, in general, store energy. Now, you can say, okay, a battery stores energy. Why do I need a capacitor to store energy? Well, let's do a quick compare of each of them. If I have a capacitor and if I have a battery. Now, a capacitor and battery, like I said, both store energy. But a capacitor stores very little energy. And a battery uh, stores, well, fairly a lot. Where the difference really comes in is when we talk about charging and discharging a capacitor and battery. A capacitor charges very fast and a battery charges very slow. This is where it becomes very useful uh, for us. Now, let's take a look at actually how a capacitor works. And I'm going to go back to my water diagram. Uh, but if we have <clears throat> a water tower, just like we had in one of the other lessons, and we have an outlet to that water, and we have an inlet. So what we have is water that flows into this water tower. It fills this water tower up. And as this water tower fills up, water then begins to drain out of the outlet. This is very similar to what happens to a capacitor. We provide energy into the capacitor. It fills up. And then once it's, it doesn't have to be completely filled, but once it's just above that outlet, it starts flowing out. The nice thing is, is as long as we keep the energy coming in, this will continue to flow out. Even if we decide to stop the flow going into the water tank, this tank will still drain out the outlet until the water level is below the bottom of the outlet. So we can turn this off and still get water flow out. Capacitor is the same way. We can store it up, then we can uh, turn off or shut off the power or the energy going into it, and it will still supply for us over a very short amount of time a output. All right, now before I go on to the schematic, let's talk about um, the labels and um, symbols and such. So there are two that I'm going to talk about in this lesson. This is a normal cap. That's probably the generic um, symbol for a cap. This one is more specific. This one uh, is a polarized cap, electrolytic uh, to be precise, and sometimes there's a plus. Now just by showing that plus that tells you that it's got polarity, hence why it's called a polarized capacitor. If we look up here at our pictures, these three you see here and these two that you see here are definitely polarized capacitors because if you look close, there's a stripe. Here it's a yellow stripe, that's a white one, that's a white one. And over here on the side, you may see a little bit of a white stripe over here. What those stripes tell you is what side the negative is on. So in this case, if this was a symbol that we were using and this was the negative side, because that's the positive side, then the lead, you can see there's arrows pointing down to the lead and those arrows have little neg negative symbols in them. Uh, it points to the negative lead. So that's how you know which orientation the polarized capacitor has to be because remember when there's polarity, it has to be plugged in the right way or else you won't get this effect of the charging and the discharging. All right. Uh, also, 
Capacitance, I need to mention, is measured in what's called farads. And again, if you look at the markings, if you look at the markings on this one right here, um, it says 50 volts, and I believe it's 100 microfarad. So if it says 50 volts and 100 microfarad, that's the value of the capacitor. The voltage is actually the amount of volts that you can charge this to. Uh, and you can charge anywhere from 2 volts all the way up to 50 volts. If you charge over 50 volts, then you can damage these capacitors. Or worse yet, they can explode. And if they explode, these are usually metal casings. So you want to be very, very careful when you're using capacitors and when you're charging capacitors because they can explode. You should have safety goggles on whenever you're building a circuit. Uh, and that pertains to these also when you're dealing with capacitors. Because if there's a slip up and you put too much power in there or you don't uh, rate the capacitor properly, you could have one explode on you and that could be very hazardous. So you wanna be careful of that. All right, so now if we look at uh, an example I'm going to go kind of go through two examples here. This is a basic circuit. Okay, you've seen this before um, with an LED and a resistor. Remember that resistor is limiting. I'm not going to put a value there. It really doesn't matter at this point. Got a 9 volt battery, but now I have a push button. So when I push this button down, um, power begins to flow, current begins to flow, and it lights up that LED. But if I release that button, we get an open circuit and current cannot flow, therefore that light goes off. Well, here is where capacitance comes into play. I can put a capacitor, and I'm gonna put an electrolytic one, in parallel to my LED in my resistor. Now, when I push the button, I get a path to pass for my for my current. I get current traveling this way and I get current traveling this way. So when I push the button, the light comes on, but what happens now is power is flowing through this capacitor and it's charging it up. And that only takes a very small amount of time. What happens then when I release this button this pretty much all goes away because this is an open circuit. But for as much time as it, uh, I rate this capacitor, now current flows from the capacitor and keeps the LED on for a given amount of time. Now, I'm not going to get into calculations and how we figure how much time that is, but I will tell you this. Uh, as, you, um, as you increase your capacity, of your capacitor, obviously that will then keep your light on longer. All right, that's all I'm gonna say about that right now. Now, <clears throat> we've done this experiment multiple times in class. We can add capacitors here uh, and keep that light on uh, pretty much as long as we want. One other thing that a capacitor does for us, and this might be a little bit beyond what we've talked about so far, but I think it's worth noting. If I have a, a, a circuit, and um, let's just say it's let's just say uh, um, I'm gonna say it's a little a little uh, half wave rectified circuit. Now, these usually come out um, of a power supply. You can go to my power supply uh, diagram or power supply videos and, and see this. This is a half wave. If I, I can use a capacitor and I can put it in that circuit, so say here's my source and I want a capacitor right here and then I'm going to measure it out here. So this half wave, let's say, is just coming out of this source and I put a capacitor in there. What I end up getting is something then that looks like this on the output. It charges like it's supposed to, but then it discharges slowly, and then it hits the next little little bump here, and then it discharges slowly until it hits the next little bump. 
So what this does is this gives us a little bit more of a straight line signal. Now, if you go to my power supply videos, you'll see much more detail what I'm talking about here. But again, I just wanted to go back to that capacitor can be used to smooth out different signals. And basically, if you go look at these filter capacitors here, here, and here, um, that's exactly what they do for their different applications. All right, so let's take a quick review. Capacitors, what do they do for us? They store energy. How do they do that? Well, they do it rather fast, which is to our advantage. How does it work? Well, we pour energy into it, it stores the energy for us, and then it dumps the energy out. As long as we keep the energy going in, we get a constant uh, um, flow of current out. We went over our two uh, symbols. Uh, our example here shows that if we push this button, we charge the capacitor and light the light, and then once, we'll, once we release the button, then our capacitor keeps the light on for an X amount of time until it's completely discharged. Now, one thing I'll note, let's say we just keep hitting this button continually. Well, this is gonna charge and discharge, charge and discharge, charge and discharge. So what you would see by hitting that continually is that light would never go off. Uh, we can also use capacitors to smooth out signals. In this case, this is a half wave rectified signal and we can smooth it off to almost a nice DC signal. All right, that's it for capacitors now. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, if not, as always, please uh, subscribe to Spreader Web Education.